and go into the, the earth. It just hits the thorns. And the thorns are the choices that we make. The habits, the, the, the regular choices that we make. The, you know, we, we make them so, so often and so regular that, um, that we, we just do it without thinking. And, and that, those are our thorns. Of course, one, one of the jokes that I've told Pastor Christina is the Lord wants to have a relationship with us all. And he wanted the Israelites to come, sanctify themselves, come up to the mountain and worship him. Correct? And when the Israelites hear his voice, he spoke with a loud voice at that time, uh, they were afraid. So they asked Moses to go and worship him. Moses went, and Moses is supposed to tell the people what to do. So how is Moses going to work? So the Lord had to give Moses on the Ten Commandments. And, and the Lord carved the Ten Commandments at that time on two stones, right? On two, two stone tablets, they say. So that is the old time. But today, what happens? The Lord wants a relationship with, with us. We say we have a relationship with the Lord. But whenever we get sick, what do we do? We go up and take two tablets. Same thing. Right? Israelite took two tablets of Ten Commandments. Now we just took two tablets of Tylenol. Right? Same thing. So it's habit. Those are habits. And I do that. You know, I take the two tablets, then I pray. You know? <laughs> cover, cover all bases, you know. <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes we have to consider ourselves what are our tones. And it's, it, and it's hard to figure them out. We just have to prepare ourselves to, do, to once we, 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 we realize our thorns and we confess it before the Lord, ask the Lord to cleanse us, we prepare ourselves, we remove the thorns, and then we allow God to be able to plow into our heart the seed and sow the seed into our heart that would bear fruit and take root and bear fruit. Amen? Jeremiah, uh, Jer, uh, Jer, um, Jeremiah 4 3. Says, For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. Break up your fallow ground, do not sow among thorns. It says to sow ourselves in righteousness. Hosea 10 12. First part says, Sow yourself in righteousness. Identify the fallow ground. Remove your thorns, prepare your ground, then you sow to yourself in righteousness. That you can see. Examine yourself, where and what you have been sowing. If you're not sure of where and what you've been sowing, look at the fruits. Is the fruit giving glory to God or the fruit giving glory to yourself? It may be prospering yourself in something that you can see materially, but still with those prosperity do you give? Glory to God. Or do you take credit for everything? What has been growing in your hearts? Are the wrong fruits growing in your heart? What are your ultimate choices? It boils down to choice. It always boils down to choice. To serve the Lord or to not serve the Lord? To eat the, tree from the fruit from the tree of life or fruit from the tree of knowledge and good evil? It's always choice of two. You know, what is your ultimate life purpose? What is your purpose in life? Is your purpose in life to be a well-known surgeon, to be a doctor, to be a, a research scientist or something like that? Is it to have a big family? Your ultimate choice and your purpose in life are where all your choices come, come out. You make the choice because that's what you want to do. You, you choose between what is good and what is best for you. And what is best for you depends on your ultimate choice. What, is, what you choose as best for you depends on your ultimate choice. If you worry about the now and not worry about eternity, then you make the choice based on the now. What feels good, I do it. Looks good, I eat it. What tastes good, I drink it. Right? 
feels good, I smoke it. That's your choice. I mean, I just do it once, just once in a while, once in a while, right now. It's, uh, you know, maybe too much, but I'll do it today and tomorrow I won't, but tomorrow there's another choice. Look at the choice of Jacob and Esau. Esau was a very active person. He's a hunter. He goes out and he's very active. A lot of people try to be active here, even in the rain, in the cold, they go jogging, right? And then they go to work out, everything. They're active people. Esau was an active person. Jacob was more of a homely person. So what happened? One day Esau came in. He had so much activity. He, had, he went to the gym and he ran cross country. and He went up to some animals, I don't know, right? And then he came back. He was so hungry. He didn't have breakfast. He came back so hungry. And Jacob just finished preparing a bowl of soup. And he wants that bowl of soup. And he wants that bowl of soup. And Jacob, I don't know whether he's been really dece deceptive at that time or just trying to make it a joke and suddenly realized that it was an uh, opportunity available to him. He said, oh, you want the soup? You give me your birthright. Jacob knows that he will not give the birthright for the soup. He can easily make a soup or, or wait for another bowl of soup to be made. But then suddenly Esau said, I don't care about birth my birthright. He doesn't care about the future. And suddenly Jacob realized that that is an opportunity for long-term long -term success. It's critical to have that birthright of the firstborn son. And uh, so they traded for the bowl of soup, for the birthright. Are you trading something for the now, trading, trading away something for the future? Consider yourself in the choices. Let us consider, all of us, in our choices. Are we trading away our future for the choice that we make today? Reap in mercy. Second part of that verse says, reap in mercy. So we will reap what we sow. Galatians 6, 7 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows or woman sows. He or she will reap. The reason why you are reaping the wrong things is because you've been sowing the wrong thing. The reason why you have not been reaping the right things is because you have not been sowing the right things. If you plant grapefruit seeds, don't expect to harvest apple seeds. Right? Repent. Sow by making the right decision starting today. Sow what you should sow and do what you should do. Practice you know, good works. Sow in the spirit and reap life everlasting. Sow in the flesh then you reap death in the end. So reap in mercy is reap according to the mercy from God because of His grace. Reap according to our measure of mercy from God because of His grace. We do not reap in merit, we reap in mercy. Okay? It is His grace and mercy that we do not reap destruction until we repent that He has still given us today. That's why I said the door is still open. Then the verse goes on to say, Seek the Lord until He comes. Hebrews 3 verse 12 to 15 says, be, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it's called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold on the beginning of our confession steadfast to the end while it is said today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. So 
So we are to seek the Lord. So the question is, how long should I spend seeking the Lord? How long should I spend praying in the morning? How long should I spend reading the Bible in the morning? How long should I spend in worship? Some people ask that. Sure, you, if you haven't done it too much, 5 minutes, 10 minutes is fine, then you, 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 you go longer. right? But the answer is in the Scriptures. You seek the Lord till He comes. You pray to God till He comes. You worship and praise God till He comes. If He doesn't come, you cannot finally worship Him. If He doesn't come, you don't enter in the Holy Holies into His presence, you can't worship Him. If you pray and He doesn't come, there is no, your, your prayer has not been heard if He doesn't come, if His presence doesn't come. You read the Bible, you read until He comes. When He comes, he speaks to you. Right? Even if you read one verse in the Bible, 30 seconds, and the Lord comes and rains His word on you and speaks to you. You don't need to read the Bible anymore. He speaks to you. When you worship Him, after three minutes, you feel the Lord's presence. Just don't have to sing those songs that are written by strangers, downloaded from YouTube anymore. When, when God comes, you sing the song, the words that are in your heart, the tune that are in your heart. It doesn't matter how it sounds, it will sound beautiful. Amen? See, when He comes, He will rain His righteousness on you, His grace on you, His mercy on you. He will rain uh, His kingdom revelation on you. He will bring you to another level. He wants to do all these things for you and me. But we need to seek Him till He comes. Sometimes He may take a long time to come because we don't steal our hearts. We don't focus on Him. We, we, we're seeking Him, but we're still thinking of something else. Thinking of what to cook, what to eat, what to buy. Where to go. But we need to seek Him till He comes. When He comes, He will rain on us. Today is rain. Huh. I guess. It's the right day for this sermon. The rain is outside. It's a physical type and shadow of what the Lord will do. And the funny thing is, we are afraid to go out in the rain. Normally when we rain, we take shelter. So when the Lord rains, do we take shelter? Hmm? So sometimes we miss the rain. Ooh, that church is too radical for me. <laughs> Let me go to something else. Some place where I'm not more comfortable. Sometimes when God rains, it's not comfortable. I think it yeah, depends what He does. Some of the things He does, doesn't make us comfortable, you know, we, we, we feel weird. But we should know in our spirit, we bear his spirit, we bear witness with our spirit that it is the spirit of God. Amen? If, if it doesn't bear witness, of course we have to leave because it might not be of God. James 5 7 says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and later rain. We need to persevere and wait on the Lord until we have the rain. You see, when I was preparing this, at the end here, I felt the Lord saying this. The Lord says He's already made His move. In our lives, in most of our lives, He's already made His move. Why? Because we are here in this country. We were not here originally. So the Lord has already made His move. We are here. We are the seeds from afar. When Jesus was born, there were three men from the east. We do not know where they come from. I agree with Pastor Somi that it, they may come from China because it's in the record books that in the Chinese record books that they saw the star and it's the it, Confucius and Mencius wrote about a holy man that will be um, in the West that is the holy man in the West that will come and his ministry will be 33 years and then it's done that is written by them 
So obviously, if somebody reads the reads their their prophecy and saw the star, there will be people traveling towards Jerusalem, to, uh, following the star. So that is possible. They came from China. Amen. <clears throat> we are here in this country, so we are the seeds that God has sown, taken from our land, sown into this country because this country needs us as a seed to come and and as the Lord plow on the land here, our seed, they will sow us into this uh, community here. And we are to bear fruit. We are to grow. We are to bear fruit here. Maybe we are to break up, break up some fellow ground. Don't think because we are foreigners in this country that we have no power. I mean, some of us can vote, but some of us a lot of us do, do not have the privilege of being able to vote. But that's not the only avenue. We are sent here for a reason. So are we ready to make our move? It is time. It's our turn to make our move. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray. So Father, we just